Okay, um, what was it that uh, Arrhenius says constitutes an acid? Not OH. Uh, um, what was that about? So anything, any substance that increases uh, hydrogen ion concentration, sorry, I need to change this, in water is an acid. <clears throat> and so then his base was and Larry, what do those guys say? Okay. And then the base. All right. And how about Lewis? accepting lone pairs of electrons to make bonds. What's wrong with that Arrhenius theory that uh, you need two more definitions? Okay, one, um, no H2O or solvent needed. What else? No H plus needed. There's no H plus that's floating around in water. Why is nitrogen atom considered a base? What does it do? So here's the Lewis structure for, uh, for the nitrogen atom. And usually what you get is there's a bond over here with something, and a bond here with something, and a bond here with something. And then these two electrons are a lone pair to be donated. So that lone pair of electrons on top of that nitrogen is your base. It's not just the atom. Um, that atom can be inside of a molecule, and those lone pairs are still available to, uh, to react with. Um, all right, so I've got acetic acid, and so what are we drawing here? Um, C, H, 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 C, double bond, O, O, H. 
So there's my acetic acid structure. And which one of these is the, uh, is the acidic hydrogen? So can you give me a couple of reasons why that's the one? Uh, it would be a pair, but um, the carbon and hydrogens won't let go of each other. It, it just doesn't happen unless you're combusting it. Um, the first thing, if you're just looking and you're trying to figure out, forget about um, a chemical reason. The easiest way to identify which one of these is going to be the one that's the acid is to do like some Sesame Street. So I've got those three, and then I've got that one, and then it's which one of these is not like the other. So that one on the far right, it, I mean, if it was going to be one of the three on the left, which one would it be? Um, they all have an equal chance, so it can't be any of them, because only one of them is acidic. So since none of them are any different than any of the other three, it cannot be those three. So then the one that's the odd man out on the far right-hand side is definitely the one that's acidic. And uh, the chemical reason is that thing that you need to remember for the final exam, that this thing right here is what? It's an organic acid. That's one of those several functional groups that you're gonna to need to know. And so the structure of an organic acid is a carbon doubly bonded to an oxygen, bonded to an oxygen, and a hydrogen on the outside. And that hydrogen on the outside is the one that's acidic. If you, uh, if you take away this double bond here, and you just put hydrogens down, like, uh, like they're on this carbon here, they just put two hydrogens on it. This is not acidic at all. That does not react in the same way that this structure here reacts. Like this structure is vinegar. And if I replace that with two hydrogens, that's alcohol. Obviously not nearly the same molecule. Um, describe how to make Two molar solution with con hydrochloric acid. All right, so it's a uh, 12.1 molar times V1 equals seven. Or two molar. Two molar times 750 milliliters. So V1 is equal to. Uh, oh, let's see. 1500. I'm sorry, what? That's the concentration of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Um, we were talking about the acids in the notes. I had a box that had four acids of, that are very common and their maximum concentrations. And it was, I said 12 in that box, but it's actually 12.1. And so then this is 123.9. Milliliters, so 124 milliliters. So add 124 milliliters of con HCl to a 750 milliliter. Oh, no, that's not right. My bad. This is acid. How is it different than what we've done before? Safety video. Add the acid to the water. I can't put this in and then put water on top of it. Do you remember what the reasoning was behind that from that video? Bubbles. Bubbles? Uh, only because it's boiling. When you when you take a concentrated acid and dilute it down, any acid and dilute it down, it's an exothermic reaction. Heat is actually generated. That's how badly they want to be separated out from each other. So if I've got a bunch of water and I start to dump acid into it, it's a, remember water has a high specific heat. So to boil the water, I have to put a ton of acid in it all at the same time. So if I'm slowly pouring it in, you can't heat the water up fast enough to boil it. But if I've got a container full of acid and I dump water in, those first few drops of water that hit that acid immediately get to their boiling point. And if they do, you get bubbles. And what might those bubbles do? 
spray the concentrated hydrochloric acid all over you and everything else. So other way around. So we'll, uh, we'll like, I don't know, two thirds. Oh wait, how much of this do we have? 750 milliliters? Yeah, sure, that's fine. So like two thirds fill a 750 milliliter flask with uh, water and then add 124 milliliters con HCl and then um, mix and then fill to line with dropper. So if I mix potassium hydroxide and, and uh, nitric acid together, what do you get out of this? All right, so I've got KOH and I've got HNO3. Um, what form do you think the nitric acid is going to come in? There are really only two options. Aqueous is pretty much what's going to happen. You could get it as a gas, but that's a pain in the butt to deal with. So this is going to be aqueous. So you could have the potassium hydroxide come as aqueous because it definitely is aqueous or it could be a solid. It totally doesn't matter. It would have been your choice with this one. So I'm just going to write down aqueous because it's safer. Um, so what do I get on the other side? Potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate. And what's the uh, state? There's a whole bunch of water here, right? It's going to be aqueous because I, I know for a fact at least the nitric acid came with water. So this is going to react together and it's still in that water, um, that matrix. So we're going to end up making this guy aqueous as well. If I got rid of the water, for sure, it would be a solid. And, and then what's the other thing? And there's more water. So there's definitely water present. So it'll be dissolved. And it's uh, all the oxidation states are one so there isn't any balance going to be done but if it would have been something else you definitely need to uh, to balance the equation and does it 